Hello, hope you are well and enjoying this seminar. Today is our third lesson. <clears throat> and if you haven't already done so, you may want to get this book, Free to be Happy with Energy Psychologist. It's my book. Uh, you can find it on Amazon. I can send it to you free as an uh, electronic book, if you like. Send me an email. Or you may be able to download it on this platform. Now, again, I would like to ask you not to accept anything I or anyone else says without first researching it, thinking about it, feeling deeply about it, and deciding for yourself. I feel the need to share with you what I believe after over 50 years of searching for the truth. But I don't want you to accept anything I say without you also deciding for yourself. Also, it would help greatly if you download from the platform the basic seminar PDF, uh, which you can find on these pages. Uh, and I will refer to the pages that you can look at uh, while we are mentioning the study. This is another of my books you can find on Amazon or perhaps through this platform, The Psychology of Happiness. Now, there are three ways to be happy. Basically, we are happy when we have what we want. We already mentioned that. So we can either become very capable of manifesting our goals and needs, or we can be happy while working on manifesting them, or just be happy in all cases, whether or not our needs are being fulfilled. So I believe in all of these. Actually, I think number two is the best be happy while working on manifesting our needs and our goals. Now, what are the paths towards happiness? Becoming more capable. We'll have another seminar on that by, about manifesting our goals. Communicating our needs is very helpful. Learning to satisfy our needs by ourselves. Letting go of attachment. There's a big de difference between need and attachment and desire and preference. We'll talk about that. And learning to be happy regardless of what we have. Energy psychology is instrumental in all of these cases. Now you will eventually learn, we'll talk about this later, how to analyze your the creation of your emotions. We start with the stimulus which passes through our belief system and our beliefs actually create our emotions and our emotions create our reactions and our reactions we create other people's uh, become stimulus for other people and then they react to us our experiences cause all three cause our beliefs cause our emotions and our reactions and this is why the work with the inner child is so deeply important so in order to understand ourselves and how, why we are feeling what we are feeling, we need to ask these questions. What is the stimulus? What is the other person's behavior? Something that has changed, we lost something, we gained something, we achieved something, and that's the stimulus, an event, a situation, a fact about the past or the future or the present and someone's behavior. What are my emotions? And what do I believe which is creating my emotions? And then how do I react when I'm feeling those emotions? And how do others react to me when I react in that way? And how would I prefer to feel and react from now on? And which positive thought forms and beliefs will enable me to feel and react in the ways that I would prefer? Now, you remember from the first class, I talked about four categories of belief systems. We have the stimulus passing through our traumatic experiences, our childhood conclusions, which are usually false, not logical, our evolving logical uh, belief system, and our faith, our spiritual beliefs. The four of these belief systems create our emotions and our reactions. So they're passing through a filter. And if they energize or stimulate 
one of the first two systems, the traumatic experiences or the false assumptions, then we don't experience our logic or our faith. We experience emotional turmoil, which does not allow us to feel the logic and faith which are within us. What we want to do in this seminar is free ourselves from illogical perceptions, from emotional reactions, except of course for love and appreciation and gratitude and happiness, any unpleasant emotions so that we can experience reality more clearly as it is. Now let's remember that whatever happens passes through all the four belief systems, creating a subject of reality. No two persons create the same reality with the same external stimuli. This, we must assume from this that we are creating our emotional reality because each of us is creating a different, perhaps slightly different, perhaps largely different emotional reality towards the same stimulus. And our emotionally charged event can weigh more in our mind than thousands of similar events without emotional charge. So one emotionally charged event with a specific person or animal or situation in life weighs more heavily in our minds than so many other similar events without emotional charge. Another fact, when we are unhappy about what we do not have, we lose what we have. It's as if what we have doesn't exist because our mind is not allowing us to be happy because we are so focused on what we don't have. And this is called the mosquito effect. If there are 10 mosquitoes in the room and we manage to eliminate nine of them, the last one's gonna keep us awake. It's not like we're gonna say, oh, well, that doesn't matter. There's only one now, there's not 10. And it's the same way with our attachments. The one attachment is not going to allow us to be happy. And thus the serenity prayer, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. It's very important to adapt this philosophy in life. What we can't change, but it's possible to change the loss of a loved one. Or it's impossible to say change some things. We can change our emotions, we can change our economical state, we probably can change our health. But there are some things we cannot change and we need to accept them. And others we need to learn to change uh, in order to be happy. Now you remember this is Gary Craig who has created the emotion, emotional freedom techniques which we're going to be using today. He's a, an engineer. And here we have Deepak Chopra talking about the, how EFT, which we're going to be using, uh, offers great therapeutic results for people. And this psychiatrist who we mentioned, Curtis Steele, EFT has been for me the single most effective technique I have used in 45 years of practice as a psychiatrist. I have had success with panic, social anxiety, and many other disorders. And this other psychiatrist in the USA, in my 50 years as practicing psychiatrist, EFT has proven to be one of the most rapid and effective techniques I've ever used. And that's why I would suggest that we learn this. Uh, it's been used in all of these uh, subject problems. You can look at the um, PDF file that you have download, weight loss, anxiety, eating disorders, relationship issues. I'm not gonna read all of them. You can see them and you can look them up in the PDF for the seminar. And this is my book, Free to Be Happy. And these are all the chapters in the book where we learn how to employ uh, EFT and other methods that we're going to be learning on all of these possible subjects of self-esteem, working on goals, addictions, health issues, fear and anxiety, romantic re re rejection, departure of loved ones, codependency, dealing with victims, aloof interrogators, intimidators, uh, harmonious love relationships. We have the possibility of working on that. And we're going to do separate classes on all of these. So how to get free from unwanted emotions. The first subject we're gonna work on today is someone's behavior which bothers us, which sparks within us an emotion 
we would like to be free from. Okay, that's, that's the first issue. We'll be working on health, we'll be working on uh, self-acceptance, working on anxiety. Today we're, today we're working on getting free from being affected by someone's behavior. What is his or her behavior? Now here's some possibilities. When the others do not agree with me, when they don't understand me, when they obstruct me from satisfying my needs, when they don't respect me, when they think that they're superior, when they try to control me or they criticize me or tell me lies or gossip about me, when they harm me or someone close to me, when they have evil intentions, when they are negative, complaining, whining, criticizing you, you choose for yourself. And you can see the page that this list is on. When they think they know it all, when they give me advice I have not asked for, when they play the role of the victim and want attention, when they don't take care of themselves or don't carry their load, when they make mistakes, when they don't keep their word or their appointments, when they are weak and independent, when they act in egotistical and selfish ways, disregarding our or others' needs, when they use me, or rather, there's a whole total issue we're going to have to talk about if someone can use us or suppress us or not. That's another issue. When they are cold and insensitive, when they're not responsible for their word, when they are lazy, ignore my needs or reject me. And then there's another list about what we do might, which might upset us, but we're not talking about that today. <clears throat> so the next question is, what do you feel in those situations? The first question is, what is the stimulus? What is the behavior? The second question is, what is the emotion? And here are some emotions. You can find these emotions listed on page eight of your um, pamphlet. Fear, discouraged, rejection, anxiety, demeaned, hurt, worry, disillusionment, insecurity, abused, anger, hate, depression. I'm not gonna read them all. Abandonment, rage, shame, injustice, self-doubt, self-rejection. These are all possible emotions we may be feeling uh, as the result of our, what we believe about the other person's behavior. Now, the next question is, how would you like to feel? We want to establish this. So we probably want to feel love or happiness or compassion, understanding, affection, brotherliness, unity, secure, peaceful, courage, patience, gratitude, acceptance, respect, self-fulfillment, faith, hope, peace. You can choose what you want to feel in these situations. So that list is on page eight. Now, what do you believe which causes you to feel that way? What is the danger here? We will eventually understand that behind every negative emotion, there is fear. Fear that we are going to lose our self-worth or our safety or our pleasures or our control or our purpose in life. We're going to lose something which we feel is necessary and we're going to lose the external uh, basis of this when actually the, the only basis of all of these feelings is within us. This is the exchange that we need to make. So what are some of the beliefs? I'm just going to mention some of them. You'll find them in page eight on your pamphlet. I am unworthy of love, respect, affection, or being hurt. I am unworthy or unable to have health, success, or a lasting love relationship. I am unable to deal with and succeed at life without some help. I do not know what to do. I need others to guide me. My self-worth is measured in relationship to how I compare with others. Or others accept me and want me only if they believe me to be strong and superior. I am responsible for others, how, how others feel and how they are. We're never responsible for how others feel, We're responsible for what we do. We're responsible to love them and help them and behave to them in the ways that we would like them to behave to us. But we're never responsible for what emotions they create as they are not responsible for us. And others are responsible for how I feel. This is also an illusion. My self-worth is dependent on how others perceive me 
and behave towards me, another illusion we're going to work on. I am worthy only when I succeed and never make, never when I make a mistake. I'm not going to read them all. You can look at page six. I don't want to bore you. I am in danger when others are angry at me or when they scold, accuse, or reject me. I am not worthy of a permanent, steady relationship. I will be abandoned. I am and will be treated unjustly. There is no justice. You'll find all of these on page six. You can decide what you want to work on. I must not ask for what I need. I must suppress my needs. And it's my fault when someone close to me is ill. So these are just some of the beliefs that we may have about the other person's behavior, which may be causing us to have negative emotions. Now, which alternative perceptions will allow you to feel how you would like to feel? Remember now how you want to feel. Peace, self-worth, secure, and free, happy, fulfilled, okay. So what do we need to believe? What are the alternative perceptions? You're gonna find these on page seven, okay? I am a good person and worthy of love and respect as I am. I believe this. I believe that every person is worthy of love and respect. We're gonna talk about that in a separate class. I am capable of making good decisions for my life. I don't need other people to make those decisions. I can listen to them, I would suggest, that you listen to them, but follow your own inner guidance. I am able to deal with life's challenges. I am responsible for my reality and others are responsible for theirs. It's very important to adopt this perception. I am worthy of being heard. I am worthy and able to create health, success, and a lasting love relationship. Worthy and able. I'm able to deal with and succeed at life without help from others. I know what to do. I am responsible for how I feel. Others are not responsible for how I feel. I am not responsible for how they feel. I am responsible for my motives and my actions and my efforts, and others are responsible for their motives and actions. Others are responsible for how they feel my self-worth is a granted, immutable, and independent of how others perceive me and behave towards me. My self-worth is based on my inner essence, which I personally believe is divine. Remember, you don't have to accept anything I say, but I believe that our inner essence is actually divine. Not our ego, not our mind. I am worthy even when I do not succeed and even when I make a mistake. We didn't learn this as children. Life is simple and people are basically good and I initially trust them unless or until they prove otherwise. You can decide whether you want to choose this or not. I have made this choice and I believe that it's a hap it makes my life happier to believe that people are good from the beginning unless they prove otherwise. I protect myself with love and purity. I am worthy and safe even when I am scolded, rejected, accused, or when other people are angry at me. I am lovable and people naturally love me. I love others and help them in the best way I can while remembering that they are responsible for their reality and that their problems are their opportunities for growth. We need to be clear about that we cannot solve other people's problems. We need to help them. It's like pushing a car when it's stalled. We push them to get started. We don't push them all the way home and then back to work the next day and back home. We push them to get started. I am one with all in God. You may choose to believe this, you may not. I am safe and secure in all situations. I am very pleasant to be with. I am worthy of a permanent, steady, relationship. I am worthy of affection, tenderness, and love. There is divine justice behind all that happens. You may not want to choose. You may choose not to believe that. I choose to believe it, that there is divine justice behind all that happens. And we're going to talk about why I believe this, and you're free to accept it or not. 
I deserve and can have everything that I need. My body is strong and healthy and pain-free. This will help with life. It's okay to be happy when others are not. You may not choose to believe that. I can help them more effectively in that way. My self-worth is a granted and is independent of how I compare to others. And others can accept me and like me as I am, especially if I accept and love them as they are. I'm a unique, I am unique and my self-worth has no comparison to others. So you can find all of these um, logical beliefs on page seven. Now the spiritual beliefs. These also you are free to accept or not. They're on page eight. There is a divine loving being, a universal consciousness with whom we are all directly connected. I choose to believe this. There is a hidden justice in the universe which allows only that which is just and good for me to happen, even if it is difficult for the mind or to perceive it in that way. I and my loved ones are immortal beings. We do not die. We simply leave this plane and continue to exist on another non-physical dimension, which according to many sources is more beautiful than this one. This is what we're hearing. Life, the universe, God is a benign and loving, is benign and loving and gives to me and my loved ones only what is beneficial for our spiritual development. Sometimes that will be pleasant for my body and mind and ego. And at other times it will be unpleasant, but it will always be what is best for me and my loved ones as souls and evolution. As I said, whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. I'm not saying to look for difficult situations. Create the happiest, most pleasant life you can. I believe in that. But when things are difficult, rather than complaining or crying or feeling fearful, let's see how we can become stronger. And we're going to work on this. I and my loved ones have the inner power and intelligence to deal with, overcome, and use uh, to our spiritual benefit anything that has happened, is happening, or will happen in our lives. This is our choice or free will. We have the free will to suffer to feel injustice, to feel pain, or to use events for our evolutionary process. You're gonna find all of these on page eight. They are all expressions of one divine being and deserve love and respect as we are, even with our weaknesses and faults. That includes myself, my children, spouse, parents, and even those whom I don't like. So, now there's a few more questions, but we're not going to answer at that point, at this point. We're going to discuss them later on. Why do you prefer not to feel in the old way? Okay, there's probably a part of ourselves that prefers the old way. We have talked about the pain body that pre prefers to feel the old way. Why is it safe to feel how I would like to feel? Is it safe to feel happy? Is it correct to feel happy? Is it in my benefit to feel happy? to feel my self-worth, to be self, to be free in all situations. These are questions we're going to work on later on. And here again is the list of techniques we're going to work with. Today we'll be using just three of them, uh, EFT, BSFF, and the brain balancing. And gradually each week we'll be learning more and how to use them in conjunction with each other. So today we'll be using the emotional freedom technique, the be set free fast, I'm not sure we will use Ho'oponopono, ETAT, or Sedona. We'll probably use just the brain balance. I want to start out with simple combinations and then gradually proceed to more complicated uh, combinations. Each method will, method will be explained in detail when we first use it. So first we start by evaluating the intensity of the emotion. 10 is the most intense, as you can see from this unhappy face. And zero means it has no trauma for us at all. Then we accept the existence of the phenomena, which could be an emotion, a physical problem, a desire, an addiction. And then we accept letting go of the phenomena, letting go of the pain, the emotions, or the addiction. 
And then we begin tapping on the acupuncture points on the head and body to change our energy field. So what we're going to do in a moment is focus on the emotion, accept it, evaluate how strong it is, accept ourselves having it. It's one thing is you accept the emotion, second, you accept ourselves feeling this emotion. Remember other times we have felt this emotion, accept that our mind has this tendency and make an agreement with the subconscious, the pain body, the inner child, the higher self, and the divine. You can eliminate any of these you don't agree with. Choose what you want to, who you want to make this agreement with. To be freed, healed of all known and unknown obstacles to health, happiness, peace, clarity, love, evolution, and anything else that you want to have or feel. So this is how we start out. Focus on the emotion, accept it, accept ourselves. Remember other times, accept that a mind has this tendency, make the agreement if you choose to with these aspects of ourself. A possible phrase would be dearest subconscious inner child, pain body, higher self and divine being. Thank you for healing and removing all known and unknown obstacles to experiencing my true nature of peace, happiness and love even in this situation and every other situation in the present and future. It's a possible way, but we'll get caught up in the specific words. So the next step, the seventh step, is to remove any possible resistance towards change. We do this by this phrase, as we rub in this area, which you will see in a moment, the soft area um, just under the collarbone, saying, even though until now I have felt, and here we mentioned the emotion, when or because here we express the stimulus, I love and accept myself. We do this three times. Even though until now I have felt, we say the emotion. This could be done mentally or verbally. When or because, we mention here the situation, I love and accept myself. Then on the other side, just below the collarbone, I choose or deserve or accept to be free from this. We mentioned the emotion when or because, and we mentioned the stimulus. Or we can even say it's in my benefit to be free. So on one side, accepting ourselves, accepting the emotions, and the other side, choosing to be free. Then we tap on all of the points in the series, which I will show you, and we do this three times. Now, the EFT I'm showing you is different from what you may learn in other places. We have made a number of adaptations which we have found more effective, okay? So don't get confused if you learned it differently somewhere else. Give it a try, and then continue with the way you find best. And then we may also employ methods of balancing the energy, which replaces the balancing process of EFT, we don't do that anymore. We do brain balancing posture, healing code, heart math, or sedana, or other methods afterwards. Then we evaluate the subjective units of disturbance of the emotion, as we did in the beginning. If it's still high, we continue to lower it. And when it's significantly lowered, then we move on to focus on installing the new um, belief that we want to uh, in, you adapt. We stop, start at the back of the head, we go to the top of the These are the points, the acupressure points that we're going to be using, also the side of the hand and even the wrist. We're going to be working on these points. So in our version, the holistic harmony version, we start at the base of the neck. We probably won't find this anywhere else. And we tap on all of these meridians moving up. Imagine your fingers tapping on all of these energy points in the back of the neck. And then we come over the top of the head in this way um, so that we can um, stimulate all of these points, top of the head. And then up, and then we go around the side and back up again. And then we start 
tapping on these points on the face. Don't get confused. You're going to learn how to do it. You'll see. And then also under the arm, just under the collarbone and the wrist and the side of the hand. These are the points that we uh, work on. Okay, Eleni is going to show us now how to do the EFT as we do it here in the Holistic Harmony. It's somewhat different from other places. So with the right hand, we rub on the left sensitive area on the chest, a little bit below the collarbone, rubbing as we say to ourselves, even though I have this feeling, this pain, this addiction, whatever it is, I love myself. Or even though until now I have felt this way, I love and accept myself. We do that three times mentioning the stimulus. And then three times on the other side, we say, uh, I choose to be free from this emotion, or I choose to be free from this physical pain, or free from this addiction, whatever it is that we want to get free from. Or it's in my benefit to get free, or I accept to be given, I deserve to be free. Once we have done that, then we start the tapping process, which starts at the back of the neck, in which we tap from the bottom of the back of the neck, moving upward to the top of the head, and then we move over the top of the head, coming forward to the forehead, and then uh, come to the sides of the head again on those points, and go back again to the back of the neck, the back of the neck and, we turn, and move upward again to the top of the head hitting all of those points that we have mentioned and then we come forward to the forehead and then to the eyebrows the bridge of the nose and then we go actually to the temples and go back behind the ears and then we come forward under the eyes to the cheekbones and then to the lips above and below, and then to the uh, under the arms, and then to the collarbone, just under the collarbone, and then the wrists together, and to the karate point. So that's one round. We do that three times, and then we move on. Okay, thank you, Elaine. So after EFT, we're going to move on to the BSFF, Be Set Free Fast, created by Larry Nims, a psychiatrist who was also a student of Dr. Callahan. And it starts out with an agreement with the subconscious, which is pretty much what we have already mentioned. He just mentions the subconscious. We add the inner child, the pain body, if you choose, our higher self and the divine. And here we tap on the same points, adding, of course, some finger points, which we didn't use earlier. Uh, and for specific emotions, such as pain at the eyebrows, fear at the cheeks, guilt at the index finger, anger at the small finger, trauma at the eyebrows again, and then forgiving ourselves for all implication at the index finger and forgiving others at the small finger. And we repeat the possible um, agreement that is dearest subconscious, inner child, pain body, higher self, and divine being. Thank you for healing and removing all known and unknown obstacles to experiencing my true nature of peace, happiness, and love, even in this situation and every other situation in the past and present. This is an agreement that we make before we perform the exercise. And then we're going to go on to the brain hemisphere balancing procedure. Um, and here you can see we start out with the right ankle over the left and the right uh, wrist over the left wrist with the fingers united in this way. And we stay about five minutes here while bringing alternative perceptions to mind. How can we perceive this particular behavior in this case today or any other situation differently in order to feel peaceful, feel our self-worth, feel safe, feel happy, even in that situation. And then we cross over 
and put the left ankle over the right and the left wrist over the right wrist uh, with the hands folded in this way. And we bring to mind the stimulus while we're feeling our self-worth, security, fulfillment, fulfillment, and happiness. We stay for about five minutes there. And then we place our hands in the center of the chest, the palms, and we feel a sense of unity with ourselves, feeling self-acceptance, self-respect, uh, and loving ourselves as we are. And we can often feel love for others in this position. So uh, we could also employ uh, other techniques such as Sedona or Ho'oponopono or freeze frame. We're going to learn those eventually. And if the specific problem that we're working has had its roots in the childhood years, then we may very well need to do work on the childhood years with TAT, EFT, VSFF, and childhood regressions. But that is for another day. So what we would do is bring up the childhood experience in which perhaps our perception was, I am not worthy. And we don't transform the, the event, but we transform the experience, which means that we transform what we believe, how we experience the event. When I am a good person, I am worthy, I have chosen this. So this is another process of transforming the past by transforming our perception of the past, not transforming what happened, but how we perceive and the beliefs that we have about what happened. So we will use and learn these other methods uh, next time. So now please choose an emotion you would like to be free from. For this time, I would suggest that you choose a stimulus which has to do with someone else's behavior or habits so that we can work on something similar. Now, it's best if you're alone in the room, close your phone or other poss possible obstacles to focusing. If necessary, use headphones so others cannot hear what is going on and sit with your spine straight and just follow my instructions. So we're going to do that now. So you can sit in a position, in a straight position in the beginning, and close your eyes at first. Close your eyes and relax. Take a few deep breaths. Inhaling and exhaling slowly. Take a deep inhalation and hold your breath. And with the exhalation, relax. And then a deep inhalation. Hold your breath. And with the exhalation, relax. Again, inhale. Hold the breath, and with the exhalation, relax. Now bring to mind a specific behavior of a specific person which tends to bother you. You may find it annoying or hurtful, or you may feel rejection or insecure or injustice or is mildly annoyed. Focus on the specific stimulus. What exactly does the other person do which causes you to feel this way? What exactly does the other person do? Say, behave. Now focus on the emotions that you feel in this situation. What do you usually feel? Try to put a name on that emotion or emotions. Now let us accept this emotion and accept that we feel this way. It's okay to feel this way. 
And perhaps we might remember other times in the past where we have filled similar emotions. We have felt similar emotions. And if so, let us accept that our mind has a tendency to feel this way. Now, if you choose, you can participate in this agreement. Dear subconscious, inner child, pain body, higher self, divine being. Thank you for removing and or healing all possible obstacles towards experiencing our self-worth, our peace, our safety, happiness, and fulfillment. Even in this situation, or any other situation in the present or future. We are willing to let go of these emotions and feel our self-worth, our peace, our happiness, even in this situation. Now, if you choose, you can open your eyes <clears throat> and we will focus on the uh, rubbing the sore point. Let me just show that to you better here, okay. As we mentally or verbally say, even though until now I have felt, and now you can mention the emotion or emotions, when or because, and you mention the stimulus, I love and accept myself. Let's do that three times. Even though until now, I have felt, specify the emotion, when or because, specify the stimulus, I love and accept myself. One more time. Even though until now, I have felt, we're putting it in the past, and we say the emotion and the stimulus, I love and accept myself. Now on the other side, I choose to be free. I accept to be free. I want to be free. And then mention the emotion, even when or because, and mention the stimulus three times. I choose, I desire, I want, I accept to be free of mention the emotions, even when, and mention the stimulus. We do this three times. Now, if we start the tapping process at the back of the neck, alternative right and left, and we come up with all the fingers to the top of the head, and we come forward to the forehead. Now we go to the side of the head, and we go back to the base, at the base of the neck, we're stimulating all of the energy flow and we're coming back up. And now coming forward to the forehead. And now we use only two fingers at the bridge of the nose <clears throat> and then to the temple and going behind the ears. We have in mind the specific stimulus and emotions. Now the cheeks under the eyes, focus on the emotions and the situation. Now the lips above and below, tapping alternatively, and then alternatively under the arms, and then under the collarbone, at, just under the collarbone, it's higher than the previous point that we're tapping on, and then on the wrists, and then at the karate point. Now two more times, as you're focused on the emotion, bottom of the neck, coming up, to the top of the head, coming forward, side of the head, back down to the back of the neck, tapping all the points, loosening up the energy flow, coming up forward, again to the forehead, 
Now with two fingers at the bridge of the nose, following the temples, going behind the ears, coming back under the eyes, all to having in mind the emotions, above the lip and below the lip, under the arms, at the collarbone point, the wrists, the karate point. One more time, we're doing this three times. Back of the neck, we come up focused on the emotions, coming over the head, to the forehead, to the side of the head, back to the base of the neck, coming up again, coming over the top of the head, to the forehead, two fingers at the bridge of the nose, coming to the temples, tapping alternatively, right and left, behind the ears, under the eyes, above and below the lips, under the arms, at the armpit, below the armpit, at the collarbone, at the wrists, and at the karate point. Okay, now sit with your spine straight. Let's close our eyes. And let's relax again. Let's focus on what we are feeling. Bring to mind the specific stimulus which was bothering you. See what you feel now. You may feel more intensely, it's possible. You may feel the same. You may, you may feel less intensely. You may feel nothing. Or you may, may feel something different. You just accept whatever you feel. It's okay. So once again, we accept whatever we feel. It's okay to feel what we're feeling. We are not our emotions. We are the observer of our emotions. We will discuss that another time. And once again, we can focus on this agreement with the subconscious, the pain body, the inner child, the higher self, the divine, if you are ready, declare your willingness to let go of all obstacles towards health, happiness, peace, love, fulfillment, even in this situation and all other situations in the present and past. So now we will perform the BSFF. You can open your eyes. And I would like you to repeat after me. For that reason, I'm going to leave a space after whatever I say so that you can repeat it. Now, you can, the best thing is to repeat it verbally. But if you don't want to be heard, you can repeat it mentally. But it's better verbally. So we're tapping now at this point at the uh, bridge of the nose. In relationship to this behavior, or let's call it situation, this situation. I am coming free from all feelings of pain, excuse me, of fear and anxiety, and all roots of pain and anxiety in the subconscious, in this dimension, and all other dimensions. Now we come down to the cheeks. In relationship to this situation, I let go, repeat after me. I let go of all pain and suffering, all fear and anxiety, and all roots of fear and anxiety in the subconscious from this dimension and every other dimension. Now the index finger, in relationship to this situation, Repeat after me. I let go of all guilt, self-rejection, or shame, and all roots or causes of guilt, self-rejection, or shame in the subconscious, in this dimension and all other dimensions. Now on the little finger, in relationship to this situation, I let go of all anger and all roots and causes of anger in the subconscious, in this dimension 
and in all other dimensions. Now back at the um, bridge of the nose. In relationship to this situation, I let go of all trauma and all roots of trauma in the subconscious, in this dimension and all other dimensions. Now the index finger again. I forgive myself for all involvement in this situation. I have always done the best I could and I'm doing the best I can now. Now the small finger, I forgive the others for their involvement in this situation. They too have done the best they could with their childhood experiences, with their illusions, their fears, and with our soul agreement perhaps even before we were born. Now sit with the spine straight. Take a few breaths and relax. Let the mind be relaxed. As you breathe, breathe slowly and deeply. Feel your spine becoming straight and your mind relaxed. Now you can, if you need to open your eyes and see the position that we're showing you here, we're not, at other times you won't need to show it, but you're learning with the right ankle over the left the right wrist over the left wrist with the fingers enmeshed and the arms turned inside out. Now once you have taken the position, close your eyes and relax. And my question to you is, what do you need to believe in order to feel okay? you need to believe that the other has problems or that your self-worth is immutable, that you're a good person, that you've done the best you can? Do you need to believe this is a learning experience, an opportunity to feel stronger? That this is happening for some reason and you can use this? Do you need to believe you are safe, regardless of what the other person does, that your self-worth is immutable due to your essence? So bring to your mind the first alternative perception or belief which brings you peace, which allows you to experience peace. And focus on that alternative perception and that new way of perceiving this truth or belief and begin to experience it. If possible, allow yourself to feel that alternative perception. Allow it to relax you. To make you feel safe, worthy, peaceful. Allow yourself to experience this new perception of the same reality. a perception which allows you to be okay, even when this happens. Now, let's try another alternative perception from a different angle, perhaps. 
how else could you perceive this particular situation and continue to experience your self-worth, your security, perhaps your freedom or happiness, and begin to feel this second alternative perception and begin to experience it, to make it a feeling, not just a thought. The thought becomes a feeling, a reality in which you're okay even when this happens. It is a choice. You have the choice. You are creating what you feel and you can choose to feel okay. Okay. Now, today we're just going to focus on two. Now we can change our feet and our hands, putting the left ankle above the right and the left wrist above the right, and meshing the fingers and turning the arms inside out. And relaxing again with the eyes closed as we focus on the stimulus. And as we're focusing on the stimulus, on the behavior which we chose initially, let us feel our self-worth based on our inner essence, totally independent of anything that the other does or says, based on our inner self, immutable, feeling ourselves worthy, lovable as we are, and feeling safe and strong. Perhaps you can feel a light in your chest, a light which represents strength, power, feeling safe and strong and worthy. So we're observing the stimulus, but it's not affecting us because we are much larger than the stimulus. We feel ourselves growing in size. And it's really not something that changes who we are. And let's experience that sense of self-worth, of inner strength, and of peace. Now we can place our palms on the center of our chest as if we are sending healing energy to our heart center. And let us experience this position of feeling unity with ourselves. We are feeling unity, that we care about ourselves, we respect ourselves, We are friends with ourselves. And let us feel self-acceptance as we are. Accepting ourselves as we are at this stage of our evolutionary journey. We're not perfect. We have a lot to improve but we are deserving of love and respect at this stage of that journey of improvement. 
So let's feel that self-acceptance. And let us love ourselves as we are. Now, let us focus once again on the stimulus and let us perceive how we feel now when we focus on it. Just to see how we're feeling. And I'm going to count from one to five so that we can return to the conscious state, letting go of the whole process. One, moving up, letting go of the process. Two, three, four, and five. So we can complete the process and relax our position. So I hope that you're okay. Sometimes these exercises can bring up emotions. They can create some kind of upset sometimes. So if you're feeling that way, don't worry. Take a shower, take a walk, drink a herb tea, if you know how to do exercises and breathing techniques to them, it will pass. It's a process of the release, if you're feeling upset, as a release of suppressed emotions, which will gradually disappear. It's a healing process. So that was a lot for today. Next time we will continue. You can keep a diary on the issues you want to work with. So that as we employ these techniques each week, you can employ them on those issues. I will suggest each week a specific type of issue, but you are free to work on anything that you like. So have a wonderful day, have a wonderful week. Until the next time you watch the next video. Be well, be happy.